So we have a bathroom remodel going on. This is a small floor here, but we're gonna demonstrate how you can pour self-leveling underlayment over a wood subfloor to correct any bumps, uh, lips, or out of level floors. It's important when you're doing this that you choose the right product. There's a lot of different types of self-leveling underlayments on the market now. And so some are designed specifically for concrete or a concrete overlay. But if you choose the right product and you prep the floor correctly, you can pour self-leveling underlayment over a wood subfloor. So we're gonna show you how in a few uh, steps here today, uh, some critical things that you would want to do in order for this to be uh, a successful self-leveling underlayment pour over a wood subfloor. So we'll go through some of those steps now to help you out. An important part of this process is that you get your floor really clean. So you maybe have torn out some old flooring, existing flooring, and now you've cleaned up your floor, you've gotten most of the debris off of it. You wanna vacuum the floor really good, get all the dust and even little pieces off. And then as a final step, you just wanna take a, a damp sponge, not very much water in it, and get that fine dust off. We are gonna be using a primer on this floor, and so you wanna make sure your primer is gonna have a very good adhesion to the wood substrate. Next step we're going to show is that <clears throat> it's very important you seal up the floor, any gaps or holes. We're going to show how to do the edges here in just a little bit and our toilet flange. But in the main floor, there might be even small holes in the floor. Maybe you've done some damage to the wood when you were doing the demo work. You want to seal that up. Think of it in terms of like making a, a shallow swimming pool. If you think of it like that, you're sealing up every little potential loss point. Now in this house, we have living space underneath it, this area. So if you have any loss of self-leveling underlayment when you pour it, it potentially is gonna run into the uh, joists and uh, flow into places you don't want it and cause all kinds of problems. So even small nail holes you wanna fill, and we're gonna show now how you even would fill in the seams where the wood floor uh, material, the subflooring meets together, just so that you're buttoning everything up and you're not having any potential loss of your self leveler causing all kinds of other issues. So right here's a good example of what we're talking about. You have a seam where the subflooring meets together, the butt joint, and it's it seems pretty tight, but you just don't wanna take any chances. So we just have some acrylic painter's caulk and we'll just seal that up and we'll just put a bead of, it doesn't have to be a lot, just a bead of caulking. Seal it, I normally use a tool, seal that. That way you see now once this dries here in just a few minutes or within the next 20, 30 minutes, it'll be preventing any of that self-leveler from flowing through those cracks or those lost points. Here we're using the edge band strips to seal the perimeter of our room. And it's a fairly simple install with this product using a latex painter's caulk. Put a bead of caulk down on the edge band strip for the edges. And once you put this bead down of caulk on the bottom line of the edge band, just simply flip it over and press it into place and you will see how now it creates a barrier uh, around that section of room so that the self-leveling underlayment is not going to flow out on you in the places you don't want it to in the cracks of the drywall and it's also going to contain the self-leveler uh, to the area that you want it to stay. This also is going to create a perimeter expansion for your room, which is industry standard when pouring self-leveling underlayment. Here we have the edge band pre-cut toilet piece, and it installs the same way. 
what this piece does here is it prevents the self-leveling underlayment as it will be very runny when it's first mixed up from running through the toilet flange penetration it also protects the self-leveling underlayment from flowing over the top of the toilet flange you don't want it to bury the toilet flange or have the self-leveler run actually down the pipe of the toilet flange so protect it in that way as well so now that we have our edge band installed around the perimeter of our room and also in the door jam we've got the whole floor sealed up and contained we've gotten all of our holes plugged up and buttoned up with latex caulk so that none of the self-leveling underlayment can run out now we're going to go ahead and prime the entire floor with the required primer we have the Shonix AP self-leveling underlayment that we're going to pour and this is one of the self-leveling underlayments we talked about earlier that is approved over a wood subfloor You've got some good directions on the back of this bag too. I really like how they do this. Uh, but uh, we see here that it calls for 6.3 quarts of water. So we're going to measure that exact amount out, pour it into our bucket, and mix it up. It's super important when you're pouring all self-leveling underlayments that you measure your water. So don't just eyeball it. You can see our water line here, 6.3 quarts. We're back the next day. Now we've allowed our self-leveling underlayment to cure. And we can see that it, everything flowed, it filled in. We've got a flat floor now. Excellent surface to install our tile floor on now. So we're gonna trim our edge band back flush with the top of the self-leveling underlayment and we can get to installing our tile. Also, I want to show you too, there's most, multiple ways in which you can trim back the edge band once it's the self-leveling underlayment is cured. You can use this a little hand saw that I have here. Also have an undercut saw that would flush cut very easily. And another one that I like, I love my Milwaukee fuel tools, but um, this hacksaw, and if you got a longer flexible blade, it will just go right flush with the floor and then you can just lay it down and we've trimmed our edge band flush now with the self-leveling underlayment and it's ready to install flooring on back now we've installed our floor tile the installation went great the floor was flat even and now we have a nice finished product here. Hopefully this video helped you to understand some of the critical ideas and fundamentals of how to pour self-leveling underlayment, especially when you think about doing that over a wood floor. Another thing we want to remind you of is that it's critical to read the manufacturer's guidelines, instructions, and specs. So before you do any of this work, make sure to refer to that 
so that you're fully aware of all the things that are involved and that you understand what the product can do and what it's designed for. So we wish you the best and we hope that your flooring installation goes well.